Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is English Bulletin with me, Yutsa Bhatrai. The top stories first. <music> Student Union of NCT announces protest programs, demands inclusion of new map in educational curriculum. General Convention of Nepali Congress uncertain, main opposition party unable to finalize the list of active members. Police recover 50 rounds of bullets from a Truban International Airport. Initiate action against a son of a former police officer. Kashmiri activists rally in Pakistan's capital. Demand a referendum in accordance to UN resolution. And Tottenham Hotspurs make it to the finals of the Carabao Cup. Defeat Brentford 2-0. And now, the news in detail. Student Union affiliated to the Dahal Nepal faction of Nepal Communist Party has announced a second phase of protest programs against government. The All Nepal National Free Students Union has also unveiled protest programs related for educational reforms as well. Organising a press conference in the capital yesterday, the student wing of the dissident faction of NCP announced the protest programmes with immediate effect. As per their schedule, the student leaders decided to display black flags to ministers and hoist such flags in each campus of the country, effective from January 5. The students will be holding a lantern rallies today, while they will host roadside discussions on January 9. They have also decided to recite poems as a sign of protest on January 11, while a roadside drama will be held the next day to protest the government's decision to dissolve the House of Representatives. The student teachers, it was rather the student leaders, will be displaying placards on January 13 as part of their protest. ANNFSU has also demanded the government to include the new map of Nepal in educational curriculum of the country. Spokesperson of Nepal Communist Party, Dahal Nepal Faction, has said that the leaders are assured about the reinstatement of Law House as per the constitutional provision. Speaking with reporters at Baneshwar yesterday, spokesperson Narayan Kaji Shrestha said the leaders from the Hal Nepal faction are confident about revival of the House of the Representatives. Spokesperson Shrestha opined that the Prime Minister, appointed by two-third majority, does not have the right to dissolve the Parliament. Article 76 and any of its sub-clauses do not confer the right to dissolve the law house to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, spokesperson Shrestha added. There has also been speculation that Prime Minister Oli made deals with the Election Commission and the Supreme Court in his favour before dissolving the Parliament. Such speculations, however, should be discarded as rumours as it would be an insult towards Judiciary and Constitutional Commission, Shrestha added. Shrestha added that there is no doubt that the party's official logo, Sun, shall remain with the Dahal Nepal faction. Meanwhile, the deadline fixed by main opposition party for the renewal of active party membership ended on 29th of November last year. NC labelled the process as a preparation for the 14th General Convention. However, the deadline for active party membership renewal have been extended for the third time till 14th of February this year, which is a signal towards possible cancellation of General Convention in March. The Central Committee meeting of the main opposition party held on 27th of January last year unanimously decided to convene the 14th General Convention on 19th, 20th and 21st of February this year at Kathmandu. The affixed date for General Convention has been affected after NC couldn't even complete the preliminary list of active members. NC has said 14th February will be the third and final deadline for renewing active party membership. This has affected and delayed all other work scheduled crucial to hold the General Convention in time. Congress, however, is yet to announce a new date for the Convention. 
Despite of internal uncertainties, Nepali Congress has been displaying dual nature after the dissolution of Law House. On one side, Congress has announced protest programs for the restoration of Parliament and has also been quietly preparing for the election. This is Janata Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. We continue with other national news. Coronavirus has claimed eight more lives in the country, taking the death toll to 1,893. The government yesterday confirmed 522 new cases of coronavirus across the country following the latest round of tests. The total cases of coronavirus in the country have climbed to 262,784, while the number of active cases has dropped to 5,225. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, altogether 255,666 infected persons have recovered from the disease in the country so far. Nepal is currently among the top 40 countries that have been most affected by the pandemic. The US tops the list with 21.57 million confirmed cases, followed by India with 10.37 million cases. Coronavirus has infected more than 80, rather 86.8 million people across the world and claimed 1.87 million lives. In other news, police had recovered 50 rounds of bullets from Thiruvan International Airport on Monday. A person has been arrested in connection to the case. Preliminary investigation of the police has revealed that the arrested person's father happens to be a former police officer. According to the police, they recovered the bullets from a jacket placed inside the luggage of Badri Hangrai. The arrested person is a resident of Mechinagar municipality of Chapa district. The airport police has handed over the case to the Kathmandu police for further investigation. During interrogation, Rai said he was unaware of bullets in his luggage. Rai is the son of former sub-inspector Ramchandra Rai. The arrested person said he was carrying the jacket upon a request from his father. उले एयरपोर्ट बाटा केरे जाने क्रम में चाहे ते स्क्रीनिंग मुदा केरी को आवास्था में त्यो बढ़ी आंग्राई चाहे त्यो पचास राउंड नाइन एमएम को गोली सहित निज़ा बाटा बरामद करी को आवास्था हो। Police have initiated action against Rai according to the Arms and Ammunition Act. Police say that even police personnel in active duty do not carry such a large amount of ammunition. According to the police, it is illegal for former police officers to keep such a large amount of ammunition. Police are trying to trace the source of bullets. <laughs> Police have decided to bring the former officer to Kathmandu for further investigation. And now the news from Economic Front. Nepal Infrastructure Bank Limited has appointed NIBL Ace Capital Limited as its issue manager for the issuance of IPO. The bank said in a statement that it is issuing IPO of 40% of its issued capital, that is 80 million units worth rupees 8 billion. The bank will be issuing its IPO from January 15 to 19. The bank claimed that it is the biggest IPO in the history of Nepal's capital market. 
NIFRA said its paid-up capital will be Rs 20 billion after the issuance of IPO. Out of the total paid-up capital of the bank, Rs 12 billion has been collected from the promoter stakeholders, while Rs 8 billion will be collected from the issuance of IPO. Nepal Infrastructure Bank Limited has been set up by banks and financial institutions, life and non-life insurance companies and other leading entities of the private sector in joint participation with the government of Nepal. We'll be taking a short break here at Janata Bulletin. Stay tuned for international and sports news. Welcome back, and now the international news. Dozens of Kashmiri activists rallied in Pakistan's capital Tuesday to urge the United Nations to ensure Kashmir's right to self-determination under a decades-old resolution on the disputed region. Chanting slogans including, we want freedom, they urged the world community to take notice of alleged Indian human rights violation in the region, AP reported. Kashmir is split between Pakistan and India and claimed by both in its entirety and claimed by both in its entirety. According to the news agency, the rally in Islamabad came as Kashmiris marked the anniversary of a UN resolution passed in 1948 that called for a referendum on whether Kashmiris wanted to merge with Pakistan or India. Kashmir became an issue at the end of British colonial rule in 1947 when the Indian subcontinent was divided into predominantly Hindu India and mainly Muslim Pakistan and Kashmir's future was left unresolved. Pakistan and India have fought two of their three wars over Kashmir. The first war between them ended in 1948 with a UN brokered ceasefire that left Kashmir divided. The promise of a UN-sponsored re referendum on its final disposition has never been fulfilled. India accused Pakistan of arming and training Kashmir insurgents in the portion of Kashmir. Pakistan says it only provides moral and diplomatic support. The former chairman of one of China's largest state-controlled asset management firm was sentenced to death Tuesday for soliciting $260 million in bribes and corruptions. According to AFP, Lai Xiaomin, a former Communist Party member, gave a detailed televised confession on state broadcaster CCTV last January. The footage showed safes and cabinets stuffed with cash in a Beijing apartment allegedly belonging to him. Lai had abused his position in attempting to obtain the vast sum. A court in the northern city of Tianjin said, The court described the bribes as extremely large and leveled the circumstances particularly serious. He had shown extreme malicious intent, the court ruling added. The former chairman of the Hong Kong-listed China Huarong Asset Management Company was also found guilty of biogamy after living with a woman outside of his marriage and fathering illegitimate children. Huarong is one of the four companies set up in 1999 to clean up bad debt piles choking China's banking system. Lai's downfall began in April 2018 as investigators removed him from his job and stripped him of his party position. You are watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Mosua Sissoko and Hyung Min Son both scored as Tottenham eased their way to Carabao Cup final, beating Brentford 2-0 on semi-final. BBC has cited sports boss Jose, Jose Mourinho who said the semi-final victory was a reward for Spurs as they have taken the Carabao Cup seriously. With the final in hand, Tottenham were close to winning a first trophy in 13 years. According to BBC, Spurs have not grabbed a single silverware since they beat Chelsea in the 2008 League Cup final. 
Spurs also had to work hard before seeing off the championship promotion chasers in this one-leg semi-final at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Brentford had beaten four Premier League sides in a run to their first major semi-final, but they were behind after only 12 minutes when Sissoko headed Sergio Raguan's cross beyond keeper David Raya. Sun's empathetic finish on 17th minute, doubling Tottenham's lead served 70 minutes after Ivan Tony's close-range strike was ruled out by a VAR for offside. Tottenham will either face Manchester United or Manchester City for the Cup Finals at Wembley on 25th of April this year. We are at the end of Janata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Student Union of NCP announces protest programmes, demands inclusion of new math and educational curriculum. General Convention of Nepali Congress uncertain, main opposition party unable to finalise the list of active members. Police recover 50 rounds of bullets from Turan International Airport, initiate actions against a son of a former police officer. Kashmiri activist rally in Pakistan's capital, demand a referendum in accordance to the UN resolution. And Tottenham Hotspurs make it to the finals of Carabao Cup, defeat Brentford 2-0. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamachar.com. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.